What was the hardest part of the training on the on the neurosurgeon track? Yeah, two things. I think that you know, residency in neurosurgery is sort of a competition of pain of, of like how much pain can you eat and smile. Yeah, uh, and so there's workout restrictions that uh, are not really. They're viewed at, I think, internally among the residents as weakness. Mm -hmm. And so most neurosurgery residents try to work as hard as they can. And that, I think, necessarily means working long hours and sometimes over the work hour limits. And, you know, we care about being compliant with whatever regulations are uh, in front of us. But I think more important than that, people want to give all, give their all in becoming a better neurosurgeon because the the stakes are so high. And so it's a real fight to get residents uh, to say, go home at the end of their shift and not <laughs> stay and do more surgery. Are you seriously saying like one of the hardest things is literally like getting, forcing them to get sleep and rest and all this kind of stuff? Historically, that was the case. I hilarious. think I think and the next awesome. generation, <laughs> I think the next generation is more, uh, compliant and more self Weaker is what you mean. All right, I'm just, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't say it. Now I'm making enemies. No, um, okay, I get it, wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so what was the second thing? The personalities, uh, and maybe the two are connected, but. <laughs> so is, is, was it pretty competitive? It's competitive and it's also, um, you know, as we touched on earlier, primates like power and I think um, neurosurgery has long had this aura of uh, mystique and excellence and whatever about it. And so it's it's an invitation, I think, for people that are cloaked in that authority. You know, a board-certified neurosurgeon is basically a walking, uh, fallacious appeal to authority, right? You, you have license to walk into any room and act like you're, you know, an expert on whatever. And fighting that tendency is not something that most neurosurgeons do well. Humility isn't the forte. Yeah, one of the, so um, I have friends uh, who know you and whenever they speak about you that <laughs> yours, <laughs> yours have the surprising quality for a neurosurgeon of humility, <laughs> which I think indicates that it's not, it's not as common as perhaps in other professions. Cause there is a kind of gigantic sort of heroic aspect in neurosurgery. And I think it gets to people's head a little bit. Yeah. Well, that, I think that, uh, you know, that allows me to play well uh, at an Elon company yes. because Elon, uh, one of his strengths, I think, is to s just instantly see through fallacy from authority. Yeah. So nobody walks into a room that he's in and says, well, God damn it, you have to trust me I'm the guy that built the last, you know, 10 rockets or something. And he says, well, you did it wrong and we can do it better. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm the guy that, you know, kept Ford alive for the last 50 years. You listen to me on how to build cars. And he says, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so you don't walk into a room that he's in and say, well, I'm a neurosurgeon. Let me tell you how to do it. Uh, he's going to say, well, I'm a human being that has a brain. I can think from first principles myself. Thank you very much. Uh, and here's how I think it ought to be done. Let's go try it and see who's right. Uh, and that's a, you know, proven, I think, over and over in his case to be a very powerful approach.